Okay, hi guys, welcome back to another review. This time we have the Fio FH5S. Um, new Fio earphone, dual dynamic driver, dual uh, balanced armature, adjustable sound switches, um, and a sort of new body design from uh, Fio. Uh, before we get into this, I just want to say that the giveaway for uh, this month is going to be the Blonde Mini. So if you're subscribed to the channel, you're going to be in with a chance to uh, win. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. You might have a chance to win it. Um, this is the box. Um, really, really nice packaging uh, from Fio, uh, as usual. Uh, most of the people that do watch my reviews or read my reviews know that I am not a fan of Fio. Um, even from way back in the days for the E11 Kilimanjaro, I think they've got very slick looking products. Um, very nice sort of packaging, but to me they're kind of like a, a lower rate Duna. Um, there, there's always been something wrong with the way that they tune their products. The, a lot of their early daps were super cold and uninviting and uninteresting to me. and. With their IEMs, they've sort of been all over the place as well. I think with the FH5, I think I like the the FH7 was good. Um, and a couple of ones in between there, but just generally, I just, you know, I, I don't know what's going on with the, the tuning department, whether it's a localised thing or a preference thing um, for their, their audio engineers, but I've always never got on with it. And this is sort of atypical for this cold, sheeny, metallic, file tuning um, that just crops up in a lot of their products, their amplifiers, their daps, uh, and now in their, their earphones. Uh, I was thinking with the the weight in this of the dynamic driver, uh, they have a large dynamic driver and they have a smaller one, so the larger one handles the um, the sub-bass response and stuff like that, and then the, uh, the smaller one is meant to tune into the mids. I found it a little bit disjointed between the balanced armatures and the, the tuning um, and then the, the treble or whatever was going on with the balanced armatures. It's just a very metallic, this isn't even a term, but it's something like brittle. It just feels like it's um, just too hot, but in a very metallic sort of way. Uh, anyway, this is going to be the presentation as usual I've put everything back in the box to try and show you how it looks like when you come uh, when you get it and um, it's a nice set of earphones wonderful set of earphones wonderful set of accessories uh, as is usually the case with Fio um, anyway let's get into it uh, high quality cardboard box with a little picture there and uh, you can see beautiful set of a uh, beautiful presentation on it uh, I've got the case is actually in the wrong way, so I'm going to have to drop it out the bottom. Um, the case actually comes like that, um, so it doesn't make much of a difference, but that's how you would get it. Earphones to the left, carry case to the right. Underneath you have all the the usual Fio accessories. I was using it with the, the tips from the FH7 and uh, actually these ones. Usually I'm a medium, but for some reason um, I was a uh, only the large ones seem to fit. Um, but if you can see here, this is basic ear tips, um, vocal ear tips, memory foam tips, uh, and balanced ear tips. So they're, they're trying to tune it with the tips as well as like the uh, the system that they have that you can tune the earphones themselves. Uh, Fio have kind of like cottoned on to what uh, Duno have been doing with their adjustable adapters. I think that's a very good thing. Uh, I'll show you in a second, but this gives you the option to use a 4.4 millimeter balanced uh, adapter if you're using something like the Detonry Honey H1. Boom. Uh, or like this little DAP's got 2.5 millimeter balance. So instead of switching out the, the actual cable, uh, which can potentially cause a lot of wear and tear on the, the MMCX connectors, you're switching out these little adapters, so the cable is going to be more likely to break than the actual connectors on the earphone. So I'm a huge, huge fan of this. It's a little bit different from the system that Duna employs, but the effect is still the same. And this is quite slick and low profile. I quite like it. Um, cleaning tool, uh, kind of not your average cleaning tool. It has this little thing that you adjust the uh, the settings on it. 
It's fine. Uh, ear tips have been over them. One thing I want to talk about with the ear tips was that even switching to the complies and stuff, usually that maybe takes a little bit of heat off the treble. Um, but even between EQing and tip rolling, the, there was nothing that I could really do to um, bring this this back. Uh, let's take the earphones back out. I'll put them to one side. And let's have a look at the case. The case is absolutely gorgeous. A really, really nice job. It's a, a fake leather, but it's very high quality. I uh, really, really like it. Little magna yeah. magnetic uh, closing tab on it here. Opens up. Uh, and it's it's just an, a nice little case. Now, I'm always going to use my Pelican cases, um, just out of preference. I, but if you've not got a Pelican case, this is a hard case and throw it into your bag and uh, yeah really high quality for the price of the earphones so we'll put the accessories and the box to the side and let's take this off we'll discuss the cable first okay so the cable is quite nice um, it's not as good as something like some of the lower uh, Duna ones, um, the Duna earphones just feel a little bit more hefty. Um, this has no memory retention, um, so you can see there that even after being wound up, and I've had it wound back in the box for three days, uh, it's a very well behaved cable. It doesn't have um, like that memory where it holds a kink. Like, as soon as you unwrap it, it just flows very, very nicely, but it's kind of springy. Um, it just feels a little bit elastic in my hands. Uh, it's very nicely made and the hardware on it is excellent. The test to like put it down is here and there's just minimal, you know, that elasticity sort of uh, pops it back out, but I wouldn't say that they're tangle prone. Uh, I think it's a good solid cable. Uh, as you can see from the bottom here, you have a quad uh, braid at the bottom splitting past the splitter point into a dual twist. Uh, that's very common recently, and I think it's the sort of optimum solution to, um, you know, cut down on the the kinking and stuff like that. The, the quad braid, uh, you can see if I hold it in here, it will spring back out. Uh, the only thing is, and this is something I've not really felt on a lot of uh, earphones, and you would only understand if you actually felt it, is if you hold it like this and just move it like that, you can actually feel the resistance. You can feel a almost like a creaking. And despite these being an over-the-ear set of earphones, um, there's still microphonics that travel up from this. Um, it's very pronounced you know, when you do this. I've not had another cable where I can think of that the, whatever the sheath, the, the actual core's in, uh, it, it transmits a lot of feedback in the hand and when you move about, that transfers to uh, feedback in the ways of sound, uh, microphonics. So that's something to think about. Um, I like the cable, I like the way it looks, but I just think that the competitors, um, even at lesser price points, have uh, better options. Um, so yeah, we have the standard 3.5, we have this uh, metal bodied connector uh, that's super nice. The system for interchanging the plugs, super nice. Uh, metal splitter, metal cinch, fantastic. The cable, the ear hooks on it um, sit really, really nicely on me. I think they're a little bit more aggressive and pronounced than I've seen on other ones. It's a very subtle thing, but uh, I like the way that that sort of securely fits in. Then you've got the clear instead of metal uh, MMCX connectors and it is MMCX connector which is by far uh, my favourite uh, system uh, for an earphone cable. Uh, I just think it uh, is a lot more stable than the corrosion problems that I've had in the past with a two pin connector and uh, also if you're changing cable although that's not as much of a thing now because of the uh, the adapter system. It used to be you're pulling two pins out, putting two pins back in, and that was uh, a major stress point. Uh, the earphones, as I say, uh, dual dynamic, dual balanced armature. Uh, they're beautiful, beautiful looking earphones. Uh, I, I would even say it's 
it's it's probably their best. Uh, the F87 is really, really nice, but I, I like these gold accents and I like these little ridges here. Uh, you can see on the top that they have the filter switches, so you can set it into multiple different uh, tuning configurations. Uh, the tuning configurations actually have quite a, a profound effect. Um, a lot of the earphones uh, I test with this system is very minimal in the way that um, it affects the sound. The only thing is that there was nothing I could really do to bring back the, the treble. Um, similar earphones that use that system, something like the LZ A7, you get a, pre uh, a pretty similar effect in quantity uh, of the variability in the sound, but just with this one I just couldn't bring the treble back, uh, either by rolling the tips or using the little filter switches. Um, all metal body, it's quite small and it's ergonomically friendly, this sitting in the Tragus anti-Tragus zone and uh, yeah, super super comfortable, it's got a medium depth insertation, it's metal bodied, uh, so you would have expected that it is um, quite good at blocking sound, but these are I think a semi-open design, just because they've got the two dynamic drivers, if you didn't vent these earphones you were going to have uh, quite a build up of pressure uh, in your ears, so uh, they, they do need to be quite heavily vented and in a way that actually contributes to one of the, the pro points of them, which they are quite an open and airy sounding earphone. Um, going into sound, I'm not going to drag this review on like the other ones, this is not going to be an over 20 minute review. Uh, the sound, I couldn't find a use case for them. When I'm looking at these earphones and I'm evaluating them, I'm comparing them to other stuff on the market. In this, you have the Mangra T, LZ A7. They're both a little bit more expensive, uh, but even going below Tipsy Dunmar, Peacock, Peacock Audio P1, uh, I think they're all better earphones, better tuning. Um, it's not necessarily to do with the capabilities of the design, but in the way that it's it's been finished and tuned. And with this one, I the bass was pretty decent. I I, I liked the 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 bass quantity was a, a good all rounder sort of bass quantity, um, but it was lacking sort of texture and detail um, that. You know, I just kept wanting something a little bit more in terms of mid-bass uh, texture and detail, especially on like double bass, jazz tracks, that sort of thing. Uh, going into jazz tracks, that, that was where these were sort of exposed. Um, you know, jazz flute and stuff like that was very, very harsh um, going into the treble. Uh, the treble, as I say, was... It's, it's peaky, it's hot, it's a little bit fatiguing. Um, and I'm a treble head, I really really like treble, um, something like the, the Excalibur and stuff that has a really really nice treble, uh, doing an EST, nice treble, um, but push towards the, the sort of more sparkly side. I like a little bit of sparkle because it adds to this sort of airy presentation of stuff. This one sounds overly, overly hot and it is, it is fatiguing in long listening sessions. It's something, again, that I've said that I've found on Fire products. They seem to lean cold and metallic, uh, and this has got that sort of same presentation to it. Uh, the mid-range is fine. Uh, there's, there's this, like, balanced armature quality, but then you have the, the quality of the, the dual dynamic, the smaller dynamic driver in it. I, I can't put my finger on it that that is exactly what's happening here is that there's a, a maybe sort of an imbalance or something going on um, <laughs> it just sounds like I'm getting a lot of detail from one area and then it's sort of muffled in another at the same time it's it's, it's sort of strange maybe that the crossover point where the the lower mid-range intersects with the upper mid-range and where the balanced armatures take over and become prominent there might be a little bit of a, uh, not the smoothest uh, sort of crossing over into that um, that area. But now, are they bad earphones? No, they're, they're a good set of earphones. They sound good. When we're talking about this and we're, we're nitpicking this, uh, we're, we're really like sort of looking for flaws in the armor. 
ultimately when you're evaluating an earphone like this you you're looking to compare it to other earphones and that's when they fall down um you know five years ago or something like that, if something like this was out i think everybody would would rave about it but the competition is especially in the past two years just gone so insane i mean something like the tin hi-fi p1 gives you so much more than this um albeit that it requires quite a strong source to drive it and um, the tin hi-fi p1 is a better sounding earphone and it's a hundred dollars less maybe um, this is a good sounding earphone, it's just came along at the wrong time where the competition is insane from the Chinese manufacturers. You have so many earphones in that two to $350 price range that offer so much, so much tuning for different, um, different ways of listening depending what genres you're, you're a fan of that I just don't think that these uh, these find a place in terms of value to uh, value and performance. They're a beautifully designed set of earphones. It's something that Fio have been doing really, really good. The, their aesthetic design is picked up. Their build quality, as always, is fantastic. Um, and the, the, the new adapter plug is also fantastic. It's just the tuning that they seem to um, get wrong. And maybe that's just me. Maybe that's uh, something to do with you know, the Asian musical genres tend to have that emphasis on like very high sparkle um, in the top range. Um, but I'm comparing it from a, a Western perspective and the genres that I listen to. And I do listen to a lot of J-Rock. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just not something that's versatile enough for me. I think if you're looking in this price range, the ones that are listed, the, the Mangrid T, uh, Tipsy Dunmar, if you want to go a little bit less, or pick up a set of the um, Tin Hi Fi P1, even the, the, the Sure Tape, which are $150 or so less than this, um, I, I, I would take them definitely over this. Um, stepping up, you could go into things like the, the Excalibur and stuff, you know, but you're talking like a $150 more at that point. So anyway, that's it. Uh, sorry if somebody was looking to pick this one up, but I hope that giving you the other suggestions has maybe given you some sort of uh, inspiration or some sort of idea. As always, if you're wanting uh, specific recommendations, um, just shoot me a message. Just know that, or just leave a comment down below. Uh, just know that I'm only going to comment on stuff that I've heard. Uh, I'm not going to make speculative uh, comments saying like, you know, try this other earphone. Uh, the ones that I've heard are also, there's maybe about 50% of the earphones come in that I've also heard, but I've not done a, a, a video on them. Um, so there might be something else. Just leave a comment if uh, I see two earphones that I've, I've already tried. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be happy to give you a recommendation, but just know that that's going to be heavily biased to the type of music that I listen to, which is quite varied, but also there's a lot of classical and jazz in there as well. So that's it. Thanks for another review uh, or watching another review. And coming up next, we have the Heavy Crystal 6 and uh, the, I think it's the Moondrop, Moondrop Aria earphones. So uh, yeah, definitely check them out. Subscribe for more videos. We're going to try and put out two or three videos a week. And uh, yeah, let's go to the channel and get more reviews done.